for finding a guest. I will share two pieces with you tonight, and my first one is called Foreclosure. For Carlene Balderrama, Woman Shoots Self Over Foreclosure, Taunton, Massachusetts, San Francisco Chronicle, July 14, 2008. Okay. Come on in. Never mind that I am lying here stone cold. Doesn't matter anymore. Look in the cupboard. There may be some Cheerios in the fridge. There may be some milk. At least half a pint to wet your whistle. Be careful. Don't stomp on my body. Just walk around as if you're in a mausoleum, or better yet, as if you came to pay your respects. I faxed my letter to the mortgage company this afternoon after I drank a cup of Starbucks coffee. So go ahead, Mr. Auctioneer. See what you can get for this house. Small, cramped, but where I lived with my husband and kids. Just go ahead, see who the highest bidder is. Just make sure you feed the cat. And don't take away my husband's high-powered rifle. He owns it free and clear. This poem is called Eric. Sells the street sheet from 9.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. In front of Books, Inc. on Van Ness Avenue. Born in Algeria 77 years ago. Algerian father, black American mother, six wife but didn't want to be a sixth wife, brought Eric at seven to the United States. Lived in New York, Kansas, and Texas before arriving in San Francisco in 1989. Helped his stepfather delivering produce. Worked as a laborer laying concrete. But jobs difficult and had no money to join the union. Had two daughters, one 26 now, in Sacramento, who come to visit him on Van Ness Avenue as he sit, street sheets fanned on his lap. Empty plastic containers and plastic bags surrounding his concrete home on the sidewalk. His daughters give him a few dollars when they can. Two different women, one saying, there's good vegetables inside, laying a bag down marked with Max's Opera Cafe next to his wheelchair. The other woman comes out of her car, slips a $5 bill into Eric's hand, his arthritic fingers peeling with dry skin, saying, haven't seen you for a while, darling, as she dashes up Van Ness. Eric keeps peeling skin off his left forefinger. This is where I got knifed. A guy tried to rob me, pointing to the gallon jar with five pennies and a nickel inside. Luckily, he had held up his hands in front of his chest. Otherwise, he would have been sliced on the neck or through his heart. The cops caught him, didn't get my money, his mouth moving, showing no teeth. Three years ago, got cut on the forehead, lifts his watch cap to reveal a one-inch scar, sells 20 street sheets a day if he's lucky, needs $26 for a room for the night. Otherwise, goes to the shelter. If no bed, he can sit up and sleep. 
get a shower in the morning, gets lots of pennies. A man brings him a roll, unrolls it, and pours 500 pennies into his jar. Why don't you just give him a $5 bill, his wife asks. Because I want to give him something to do. His mom taught him to read and write, likes to read stories and poetry, been selling street sheets for over 10 years now. The cops no longer harass him because he doesn't do drugs, doesn't do alcohol. Besides, the sidewalk is public space. I'm Muslim, Eric says. Muslims cause no harm. The people in the condos at Opera Plaza, some drop coins into his jar, some don't. A lady at the corner panhandles, doesn't compete with Eric. But patches by tell her, why don't you go back where you came from? Don't need his kind around, pointing to Eric. And how's that, she retorts. Where can I go? Some people give her quarters, maybe a bill, but only pennies to Eric. Why? Because she's white, he says without grimace. Likes it when his six-year-old granddaughter visits his home across from a bordered McDonald's where another man sits on the pavement as if guarding the abandoned building, as if guarding it is a sanctuary for passing his day in silence. Eric saves his pennies. This is for college, as he thrusts a jar at his granddaughter on the sidewalk next to him. Thank you, Grandpa, she says. She calls me Grandpa. Majestic, Eric sings out. I call her Majestic. Aww.